Hello everyone and welcome back to another how-to video brought to you by the Head Honcho of Bonfire. Today we're going to take a look at Bonfire's newest feature, the Dynamic Rate Builder. The Dynamic Rate Builder uses both a Periods tab and the Rate Details tab. Both of these are located in the editor. Now the Dynamic Rate Builder allows you to set up your Bonfire Reservation Management account to automatically complete rate changes for various rate strategies. You can automate multi-season strategies, holidays and weekends, and even special event pricing for optimal rates and revenue. So let's start with the Periods tab. In the Periods tab, your goal is to create periods of time that are stacked and connected to accurately reflect your rate calendar. Don't worry about the actual rates and the values right now. Later in this video, we will show you where you can input those rate values. Right now, you just want to know what dates and periods encompass your rate calendar. There's three rules I need you to remember. Special events take priority over all of your general periods. There's a checkbox in the form down here that says events that will give priority to that special event over the baseline periods. Next rule is no two events can intersect. You can have events that have the same open and close date. So one event can end on one date and the next event can also start or open on that same date, but they cannot intersect. And the third rule, in order to even create a reservation, you have to have an active period, meaning that today's date must coincide with or between the open and close dates. So let's go ahead and create a very simple general rate calendar. We're going to start by creating a very simple baseline period for the 2019 season. We can come over and create this period using a name that we will automatically understand and identify. And for this, we'll set this up as year round period. Now, if you are only open for six to eight months, during the season. You can create this name period with 2018, 2019, on season, off season, peak season, whatever you so desire. Next, you're gonna choose your open and close dates or beginning and end dates. Now, just like Bonfire's format for reservations, where you choose an arrival date and a departure date, the close date is going to be similar to that departure date. So this is not the last night of stay, this is the day that your guests would depart. So let's say we have this year round period. We can open it up to basically any time in the past. We wanna make sure that this is active. So January 1st, 2019. For a year round period, we may want this to go on for this year and next year. And then after that, we may change our rates. So for now, we can just come in here and for the rest of 2019 as well as 2020, we're gonna to wanna to have this active. For the end dates, we're going to wanna to actually set this up for January 1st, 2021. We want the last night for this period to be active on December 31st. So this tells the system that on January 1st at 12.01 a.m. this period is no longer active. We're going to keep the events checkbox unchecked as this is just a simple baseline period. And we're going to create. Now to show you how this events checkbox works, we're going to go ahead and create a special event weekend. Everyone's favorite, Memorial Day. So we can simply click add new and we'll clear out the form and then create a period named Memorial Day 2019. This tells me that this period is for Memorial Day in the year 2019. You should name yours something similar. We're gonna go to the open date as May. And since we want the this period to encompass the weekend, you may want to start this on a Thursday or a Friday, depending on how you operate your campground. We want to start this on the 23rd. Now we want this period to be active all the way through till after the Monday of Memorial Day. So that means that the 27th is Memorial Day. We want this period to be active for the 27th, the evening of the 27th, and then on the 28th, turn back to the regular year round period. So we'll put the close date as the 28th. Now we're going to make sure that this event 
checkbox is checked. This will now tell the system that Memorial Day period has top priority over any of the baseline periods. When a reservation is made that incorporates these dates, it will use whatever rate value you add into it from the rate details. Now that we've created our baseline rate and special event rate, let's go into the rate details and I'll show you where those values can be input. Go to the rate details tab. In the rate details tab, you're going to create rates that tell the bonfire system how the reservations should be calculated. This is where you will need to know the rate values to use with your different periods. Using the form on the right, use a name for your rates that you will readily recognize and actually know what the rate entails. We recommend actually using the word rate so you know exactly what it represents. For this, we're gonna very simply create this as an RV site rate. Next, we're gonna input the values for the rates for each period. Now you don't see any rate grid here, once you have a rate name, you need to input the values of the rates in each period. Click on the period label and it will open up and show you all of the periods that you've created in the previous process. You see we have our basic year-round period as well as our special event Memorial Day period. Let's click on the year-round period. These are going to be our basic rates for our year-round season. You can input daily rates, weekly rates, monthly rates, as well as seasonal rates, and then we do have the option for weekend rates. For seasonal rates, this is a very special operation, and if you need to know how to set this up as well as the reservation process, refer to the seasonal site rate and seasonal site how-to videos on the Bonfire website. For now, we're simply going to use the daily, weekly, monthly, as well as the weekend rate. So a couple of things to remember. Right now you see zeros in all of the cells. These are placeholders. These are not actual values. If you don't have a value to input into a cell, do not input anything. Just leave as is. If you do enter a value in there, even as a zero, the system will automatically think that that zero is an actual value and will use that value to calculate the reservation. Whenever you enter any value into a cell, you need to set it up in the format of dollars and cents. For example, if our daily rate was $25 a day, we set it up to five decimal point zero zero. Now, if we do have a, a value in one of the rate cells, it is mandatory that we have values for the next two cells, the extra adult and extra children cells below it. Even if you don't actually have a rate for extra children and adult or don't charge for it, you can very simply put in 0, 0.00. Fill out the rest of the cells for any values that you have for weekly, monthly, and maybe even weekends. Once you've filled out your base period, we can now go to our special event period. Click on the label to open. Now during special events, usually these don't take more than a couple of days. So traditionally, all you need to do is input a rate value into the rate cell, as well as follow the rules for the extra adult and extra children. So maybe our rate for the special event is $40 per person. And then extra adults and extra child would be $10 per person. And that's all you need. Going farther with this form to create our rates, you have a couple of other options. One, you see this round month to 30 days text as well as checkbox. The bonfire system is intuitive to know how many days are actually in each month. So it will know if February has 28 days and then the others have 30 and 31 days. A reservation much, must reach those number of days in order to trigger a monthly rate. However, we do recognize that sometimes you just want to make it simple as well as for some accounting purposes, 30 days is fine for triggering a monthly rate. So if you would like to operate in a way to where all you have to do is create a reservation that equals 31 days and it will automatically trigger a monthly rate, just make sure this check, bar, check box is marked. If this is not marked, then the system will try and be intuitive to know whether the number of days equals the number of reservation to trigger a monthly rate. Furthermore, we do allow taxes to be triggered into each of these rates. You can set up your taxes under the tax tab, and there is a separate video for that setup. For now, we've created a state sales tax and a county tourism tax, and we can 
trigger those taxes to be incorporated into the reservation by making sure those are checked. Those are checked for nightly, weekly, as well as for monthly. The online booking page will ask for a deposit in order to create a reservation. If you keep the deposit at zero, then the online booking page will not ask for a deposit and it will not ask for a credit card. In order to trigger a deposit, you very simply need to input a value that is higher than zero. This is set at a fixed amount right now. So if we set $25 as our amount, the online booking page will ask for $25 in order to secure that reservation. Now, one trend that is taking flight in the campground industry is one that mimics hotels and motels. When you make a reservation for a hotel, they ask you to pay 100% of the reservation charge right up front. This is good practice for them and could be good practice for you. If you'd like to take a percentage of the reservation charge as a deposit, you very simply need to input the percentage value, in this case, say 100%, and then click on the percent checkbox. This will tell the online booking page to take 100% of the reservation charge right up front in order to secure the reservation. For each rate, we do ask that you enter the number of adults included, usually it's two, as well as the number of children that are included in the rate. The online booking page, as well as when you manually create reservations, will take the included number of the adult and children, and anything over that will then charge for the extra, extra adults and extra child rate. The Max Guest Field polices the online booking page to make sure that no one's making a reservation for a big party, unless you're into that sort of thing. Traditionally, we see six or eight being the number of guests that are maximum allowed on a site. So the online booking page will automatically know if they are trying to book 10 people, it will police them to make sure they do not make the reservation and will prompt them to say, you cannot have more than six people maximum on this site. The last field is the cancellation label. This is strictly a label and does not automatically police anybody when making refunds as well as when canceling your reservation. Any guests that make a reservation still need to contact you directly in order for a reservation to be canceled. End customers and campers cannot cancel their reservation without you knowing. This is simply a label. We do have multiple days that are available based on best practices in the camping industry, as well as no refunds and a label that tells them to simply reference your website for the cancellation policy. You can choose one of these and your form is complete. Click create and the system will automatically create your rate that you can then assign to a site. And it will automatically update reservations based on the dates of stay and the different rate values. That's it for this how-to video. For more in-depth strategies when it comes to seasonal sites, weekend rates, even holiday strategies, we do have separate how-to videos on the Bonfire website that will help you in more detail. Thank you for watching this general overview. If you have any additional questions, comments, or concerns, you can reach out to me, the head honcho of Bonfire, at howdy at letsbonfire.com. As always, let's bonfire.